Discovered in 1912 by German scientist Ernest Stromer, Spinosaurus aegypticus is the largest known carnivore ever to walk the planet. Discovered as a collection of assorted fossilized bones, Spinosaurus's remains were displayed in the I'm not even going to try and pronounce that Museum of Munich, Germany. However, a little thing called World War II happened, and during the Allied raids of Munich, the museum was destroyed, along with all the remains of Spinosaurus, leaving only Stromer's notes on the animal. As time went on, more and more information has been dug up about Spinosaurus, and as we learned more, it kept getting stranger, making Spinosaurus look less like a T-Rex with a fancy back, and more like this. That is until a discovery in 2014 changed everything we knew about the animal. With this data collected by Nazar Ibrahim, we finally had a good idea of what Spinosaurus really was. Spinosaurus is unique among dinosaurs, especially with theropods, the group that includes nearly all the predatory dinosaurs, including T-Rex, Velociraptor, and of course, Spinosaurus. Spinosaurus has much shorter back legs than the average theropod, with them being only slightly longer than its unusually long and powerful 7-foot arms, each arm ending in three claws, the longest and first of which being 20 inches in length. These strangely proportioned limbs made Spinosaurus primarily a quadruped, a rare trait for carnivorous dinosaurs. Spinosaurus's jaws were much longer and more slender than the average theropod, sporting high-placed nostrils and more crocodile-like teeth that lacked the serration found on the teeth of most theropods. Spinosaurus also had flatter and most likely webbed feet, as well as a long tail that, unlike most theropods, was flexible. The bones of Spinosaurus were also far denser than those of dinosaurs like T. rex, and its face was lined with sensory pits, similar to those found in crocodiles. All these adaptations show that Spinosaurus lived a different lifestyle than any other dinosaur, an amphibious lifestyle. Spinosaurus would likely have ruled the warm swamps and rivers that covered Cretaceous North Africa, feeding on crocodiles and killer whale-sized sawfish, as well as any dinosaur smaller than it that got close enough to get caught. However, one of the most noticeable things about Spinosaurus was its size. Spinosaurus grew lengths of up to 15 to 18 meters, or between 50 and 60 feet for all us non-metric using Americans. But 18 meters, that is enormous. To put that size into perspective, the largest modern crocodile ever recorded was a saltwater crocodile that was 5.48 meters in length, or 18 feet. The largest Tyrannosaurus rex was 12.3 meters, or 40 feet in length, as is the sperm whale. And the humpback whale is 12.8 meters, or 42 feet. That is insane, a predator that is longer than a humpback whale. Despite all this, Spinosaurus's strangest and most striking adaptation is still a mystery. I have him, of course, speaking of Spinosaurus's neural spines, the largest of which being 2.43 meters or 8 feet tall. Despite this being the most recognizable trait of Spinosaurus, the spine's true purpose remains a mystery. In the over 100 years since the discovery of Spinosaurus, a number of ideas about the function of these neural spines have been suggested. Now. I have scoured the internet searching for various ideas and evidence to support them to come up with this list of possible functions. Even asking Dr. Paul Serrano, one of the foremost experts on Spinosaurus, his thoughts on the strange structures. And with all the information I've compiled, I'm going to address these ideas and hopefully figure out the true purpose of Spinosaurus's unique spines. Let's start with one of the simpler ideas to address. Spinosaurus' sail being used as, well, a sail, allowing Spinosaurus to use wind power to help its aquatic lifestyle. <sighs> Despite the name, this isn't how sails work. The sail on a ship works because the cloth is allowed to capture wind, making the ship use the wind's power in the form of propulsion. Spino's sail just couldn't do this for a number of reasons. Number one, the sail's neural spines are far too close together for it to effectively capture any wind with the skin of its sail. And number two, for the sail to be an effective wind catcher, the skin would have to be thin enough for the air to fill the sail. This would mean Spinosaurus would have to have an 8 foot tall, thin structure of skin on its back, leaving it vulnerable to all kinds of damage. And without a way to fold up its sail, a Spinosaurus with this structure would be in constant pain, with its sail full of rips and holes and therefore being rather lousy at wind collection. One of the oldest and most popular proposed functions is that Spinosaurus' spines supported a less delicate sail used for thermal regulation. The idea is that such a sail would have been used to capture heat from the sun in order to get it going in the morning. 
Similar adaptations can be seen in many modern reptiles, with their cold-blooded bodies needing to take in external energy to get them going. Problem is, Spinosaurus wasn't cold-blooded. Spinosaurus and most other dinosaurs are thought to have been warm-blooded animals, especially theropods, a group of lizard-hip dinosaurs that are most closely related to modern birds. And for the record, modern birds are also considered to be lizard-hipped, while animals like Stegosaurus are considered bird-hipped. I don't understand it either. Like modern birds, its closest living relative, Spinosaurus was warm-blooded, meaning that since it internally regulated its own body heat, having an eight-foot-tall structure to heat it up would be rather pointless. If modern birds needed to heat up in the morning to get going, roosters wouldn't have their current reputation. To further disprove the idea of thermoregulation, the neural spines of Spinosaurus are thought to have been poorly vascularized, meaning that they didn't have many veins or blood vessels on them when the animal was alive. If the sail were used for thermoregulation, it would have to have a large number of veins and arteries to help carry the warming blood throughout the body. And due to there not being much evidence for this many veins on the spine, this isn't a possibility. Due to the similarities of the next two possible functions, I've taken the liberty of just combining them together. The idea is that Spinosaurus's neural spine supported a fatty or muscular hump on its back. Unlike the idea of a wind-powered dinosaur, there's a bit of support behind this idea. Let's start by cutting the fat. The fatty hump for storing energy is a trait found in a number of animals, most famously the camel. However, if we were to look at the skeletal structure of a camel, its hump isn't actually formed of its neural spines. And this makes sense. If you're wanting to store as much fat in a hump as you can, then you don't want bony spines getting in the way. The idea of a muscular hump, however, is backed up by modern organisms. The American bison has a large muscular hump over its shoulders, and that hump is supported by long neural spines. Look familiar? Well, it should. Those spines look just like the ones found on a Margosaurus. Ha, <laughs> just kidding. Those spines are completely different, and no one cares about a Margosaurus. I'm kidding. I'm sure there's a whole Tumblr page devoted to it. But back on topic. While the neural spines of the bison may be similar to Spinosaurus, there's one problem. If a muscle is connected with a bone, it leaves grooves where it was, known as muscle scars. And while the bison, and even the camel to an extent, has these scars, guess what doesn't? Our good friend, Spinosaurus. And since these marks are absent from the animal, the likelihood of a large muscular or fatty structure being supported on it is unlikely. With thermoregulation, muscled humps, and actual sailing disproven, we arrive at the more likely function of these strange spines that of a display structure. Though at first it seems odd that Spinosaurus would have developed a structure just for display, many modern animals have structures of a similar nature. The large antlers of an elk, the tail of a peacock, and the birds of paradise all sport elaborate structures primarily for display. The Triocerus camillo crustaceus, or the crested chameleon for all us who don't speak Latin, sports a similar structure to that of Spinosaurus. When the shape of the neural spines found on the crested chameleon are compared to those of Spinosaurus, the similarities are clear. Because of the similarities and the aforementioned lack of muscle scarring, Spinosaurus' spines would most likely have supported a fleshy, skin-covered sail. Having a large structure like this would be beneficial for Spinosaurus. Spinosaurus was part of a complicated ecosystem. The basic ecosystem you're taught in your biology class probably looked something like this with a bunch of smaller organisms working their way up to one or two top predator species that feeds on the other organisms. But Spinosaurus's habitat of Cretaceous Africa didn't have one or two predators, it had at least four. Aside from Spinosaurus, there was Sarcosuchus, a 12 meter, 40 foot crocodile, as well as Sauroniops and Carcharodontosaurus, two land predators that exceeded the 40 foot limit set by T-Rex. With so many other large predators to compete with, having a display structure would help Spinosaurus look larger and display its territory while on land or in the water. Spinosaurus' sail was most likely brightly colored like the feathers of many modern birds, and could have been used to attract a mate, with males and females possibly differing in coloration or the size of the sail. I actually emailed Dr. Paul Serrano, asking him his thoughts on Spinosaurus' neural spines, and he was a strong supporter of the spines being used for display. 
Dr. Sereno explained that both structures of the spines and the similar spinal structures found in relatives of Spinosaurus pointed to them being a display structure. Dr. Serena also sent a paper talking about recent studies on Spinosaurus, and he knows his stuff big time. Also, considering the fact that he has a lot more information and experience than I do to work with, by like, a lot, his support of this function, plus the rest of the evidence I've addressed, puts it in a pretty solid case for it being a display structure. So that's it, right? The spines were for display. The expert I asked sent a 48-page paper that supported this idea and straight out said that he thought it was accurate. All right, mystery over. Time to pack up and leave. Well, not quite. There's one more suggestive function, the most recent of the ones listed, and one closely tied to the idea of Spinosaurus being an aquatic animal. In a 2015 paper, Dr. Jan Gimsa, Robert Sly, and Ulrich Gimsa suggested that Spinosaurus' spines were not used for display, but improved aquatic hunting. The paper suggests that if it were simply a display structure, Spinosaurus' sail would have been a massive hindrance if it were to attempt hunting underwater due to the water pressure applied to the animal's spine. Spinosaurus' sail shape has also been compared to that of a modern aquatic predator, the sailfish. The sailfish uses its dorsal fin to help herd prey, as well as improve the side-to-side -side movement of its head to help slash at prey. With its long jaws, Spinosaurus could have used a similar method when hunting, hurting its prey and darting its head back and forth, snapping at the soon-to-be meal with fast movements. Another suggested use of the sail is that it helped with tail movements. With an unusually long and flexible tail for a theropod, the idea of its tail side-to-side -side movement being improved would allow it to efficiently move forward in the water, similar to the tail of a crocodile. However, my favorite suggested adaptation is a bit more dramatic, that being that Spinosaurus could use its long tail as a weapon lashing it out to strike and kill prey. This adaptation can be seen today in the thresher shark as well as some of today's modern reptiles. With these adaptations, Spinosaurus would have improved underwater hunting capabilities without having to use up energy chasing after prey. However, this idea has a couple of big problems. For one thing, the sail of a sailfish, while similar in shape, is very different in structure, being far thinner and able to be folded away, something Spinosaurus' sail just couldn't do. But the larger problem comes with the animal using its sail to assist such movements in the first place. For this to work, the sail would require strengthening tendons or muscles on the base of the spine to allow for these quick movements, and we simply don't have enough remains of Spinosaurus to know if it had these structures. And that's really the key to all of this. We just don't have enough evidence about Spinosaurus to know what its neural spines were for with absolute certainty. But we can use evidence we do have, along with a comparison to other organisms, to get a good idea of the possible functions. So let's recap. Number one, actual wind-powered sail. No way, not possible, not how sails work, and the sail would be constantly ripping. Number two, thermoregulation. Again, very little evidence. As a warm-blooded animal, Spinosaurus wouldn't have needed to sit out and collect energy to get going, nor was the environment cold enough for a large sun-collecting structure to be necessary. Finally, the spines don't show evidence of the required veins and blood vessels needed for thermoregulation. Number 3. A muscular or fatty hump The spines lack scarring of both muscles and fats, not to mention the fatty structure wouldn't require these spines at all. Number 4. Display The similarities to the spines of the crested chameleon sail, as well as the lack of vascular and muscle scarring, make this incredibly likely. And since dinosaurs were thought to be able to see a variety of colors, the spine may have sported bright colors and designs. Number 5. Aquatic hunting While similar in shape to that of a sailfish, Spinosaurus' spines were very different in structure, and there isn't enough evidence to know if they could have supported the tendons found in sailfish. However, with its flexible tail and it being an aquatic predator, it is very possible Spinosaurus could have had a sail that was used in a very similar way. So at the end of the day, which is it? Display or an aquatic hunting tool? Well, the sail was almost certainly used in some kind of display. But that doesn't mean it couldn't have also been used in hunting. While there are still pieces missing in the idea of aquatic hunting, the idea that Spinosaurus could have had such adaptations is very possible. 
So the final verdict on the purpose of Spinosaurus' sail at the moment is a skin-covered, possibly colorful display structure, as well as possibly being used for improved head or tail movements and maybe hurting prey. Now, of course, this could all change. We could find evidence supporting or disproving this idea at any time. If this has been made a few years ago, we'd all be still thinking that Spinosaurus was a big bipedal organism. That's just the nature of paleontology, or science in general. We're always finding new things that question or even tear down our old ideas, making us all have to keep an open mind and look forward to the future. So basically, don't get mad at me if we find something that proves this video wrong. That's just how the scientific process works, and I can't see the future. But what do you think? Is there something I overlooked in this video? Feel free to tell me about it below or wherever the comments are. That's all for now, and I wish you all smooth sailing. Not like that.